We are heading back in for game three of Team Envy versus FlyQuest. Uh, doing the laundry list once again. Have to go over player of the game. And Niski pulling it out on that one. Very early Rome to get himself yes. two kills. A whole bunch of pressure around the map after that. But then they lacked a bit of pressure. But early game for these guys continues to be on par, or better than par. And Niski's a guy that really crushed it last Yeah, game. and the fact that he still had 750 damage per minute in that game uh, is kind of a testament to the fact that even though it was 42 minutes and there weren't any team fights, yeah. he was still poking, chunking people out, getting enough stuns to zone them all. So he was being very active in that sense. So Niski picking up a lot of the kills at the end, but also, like you said, that roam at the beginning to get the two kills on him was kind of the tilt factor there for the entire game. All right, so looking at what these teams have kind of done and then what they've pulled out of Champions Select with the compositions they have, what do you think has worked for both of these squads? Obviously, Envy working the Renekton kind of things, early game lane is winning. How can FlyQuest kind of back that up because they've been looking to get more into the late game on yeah, themselves? I feel like FlyQuest need to just not play into their hands because what happened was bottom lane played aggressive into a two-on-two that was started by uh, by themselves. So FlyQuest tried to have a Callista Janna go up against a Varus and a Zyra. Right. Uh, I feel like you just need to play a little bit more passive. Say, all right, we scale. We don't need to play their game plan because you're playing early game against early game comp uh, composition. You're going to lose the early game. So just don't and just play safe, right? And then the fact that uh, they didn't respect the roam from Niski either was right. a big factor too because that was a play that was started if you remember correctly, by Moon and Balls being on the top side, and then the fact that Lyra came over the wall to help Seraph, who was pushing. They have been focusing the Cho'Gath on the side of FlyQuest throughout these picks and fans. You know what I would like to see? Maokai. A, a Maokai, yeah! A Maokai. I, I mean, I don't think I've said it before. He's returned to the forest. Because I actually just want to see him banned, but the fact that he's... At least uh, ban him. Exactly, but the fact that he's not played at all in this series or by Ooh. either of these teams um, is just kind of troubling because I feel like he's just so powerful in both top and jungle. There's the Cho'Gath ban. It was a Jarvan last game-ish, not in the first phase. Yeah, but. it was also a LeBlanc from Team Envy in game yeah. one. That's a good point. So these are the same bans from both teams in game one, but instead of the LeBlanc, they went ahead and they banned away the Cho'Gath. I mean, that's the karma for Apollo and Hakuo in that bot lane. Yeah, Caitlyn first pick, not banned on the red side here. Uh, I feel like there shouldn't be a Maokai priority because it's not going to get picked away, but I would like to see a Maokai. But we'll see. Because the Cho'Gath banned away, what does Moon go to next? And why do you want to see a Maokai? Because I want to see the engages happen. We just had a game that had very little kills in it per minute. 17. Rift. Do you not want fights as a play-by-play? -play? I am just saying. I do. All right. I do. That's All right. actually why that last meta was like one of the most fantastic metas. Because there are actually a lot of crowd control. I mean, for a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. There's a whole lot of crowd control. Don't look now. Okay, look. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Get, uh, I was but, looking down writing stuff, and the Maokai pops up. <laughs> Thank God. But yeah, the, the meta to cast this is not many pop-ups, but there's a lot of lock-ups, and that's much easier. When people aren't flying up in the air, but they're just locked down, the calls are great. And that's what a lot of this provides. You get thrown around by a barrel, but they make for some beautiful fights. And it looks like we are going to get that Maokai. We are going to get some great initiations for you, Zyrene. And we also have some top-tier picks still coming through as Lyra actually goes back to the Gragas for his choice. Yeah, Gragas is actually an incredibly popular mm -hmm. jungler. Uh, I believe he's the most popular jungler right now, especially since Maokai and Cho'Gath flex between top and jungle. Uh, and the Morgana gets picked up here, even though I believe it was banned. Yeah, it was banned in game two up against uh, Hakuo, but he loves yeah. these mage supports, right? Loves that Zyra, Fresh loves the Morgana, loves to make picks. On him. Ooh, FlyQuest. Get the late game card. Camille locked in for balls right away. What will they decide to go with? We did see yesterday a, a poppy being played into it. Obviously kind of just the fun counter, but it worked really okay, well. Yeah, you gotta ban Renekton. May have to ban Jace up against Seraph. But the Renekton is pretty much the one that comes to mind mm -hmm. against the Camille. Ah. There's a decent amount of things that counter her. They aren't exactly meta. I don't see if Seraph able, is able to pull something out. Teemo. Yeah. Uh, so it's all right, you know? 
I don't feel like it's crazy, but... Oh, Timo's crazy. Uh. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Uh, I expect the Jace with the Talia. Ah, okay. Not Just... too afraid of that. Yeah, Niski's kind of had that Talia Syndra run continuously with a few others in there. One other, I should say. Mm. Escapes me at the moment. What is the final ban here for Envy? Second phase, final ban. We've got to count. Yeah, Cassiopeia on the table, Syndra on the table. Are they going to pick their mid laner that early? I feel like you go for your support. Ooh. The Taric. Gems. <laughs> Gems. They have a lot of... Uh, Engage a lot of ways to get in, so I'm liking this from um, from FlyQuest. So far, I like the fact they have the Fates call, they have the Camille hook shot to get in, and it is going to be the Sona. So going for a bottom lane, trying to win it up against the Caitlyn and Morgana. So trying to strike back here and not just kind of seed the bottom lane. Fun little bits of sustain as well. Maokai kind of having his own, but you get that Arded Sensor from Lemon Nation on his mm -hmm. one of his favorite plays. Loves the Sona. Yeah, Sona's actually quite strong with the Arden Sensor, yeah. like you said. Actually, was at one point the highest win rate champion in League of Legends with Sona, Arden Sensor, Rush first. On ARAM and regular. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> but yes, it's a very potent lane, but also up against the Morgana. You can bully her out with your sustain and your poke, but you do have to worry yeah. that she's paired with a Caitlyn, and if anybody eats a trap or a Dark Binding, oh. you're eating the other. Interesting. Eh, Shen is actually... Nah, uh, Envy kind of likes that Shen for Sarah. Yeah, Shen is a, a champion that can duel the Camille early. Uh, you can actually protect people from her Q with your W. But overall, I would say right now, FlyQuest, I like their engage. The mid lane rounding out with a Corky, not the greatest thing in the world, but they do have a, a bottom lane that can pair up against Envy. Right. Their top lane scales, That's their jungler scales and has engage. And then the mid lane, we saw it before where High played this kind of as a neutral matchup into the Syndra. So we talk about the scales, we talk about a bit of the matching up, but overall, how is that early laning then? Can FlyQuest kind of crest what Envy has been doing and beat them to a better early laning phase with this composition that we see here? I mean, they're going to try to contest. That's the big thing, is Moon will make things happen if he wants them to. Uh, Balls has ways to engage. Moon has ways to engage. Turtle has ways to engage. Elimination has ways to pick, right? Like, there's just a lot of ways to start fights here for FlyQuest, and the last game, felt like they didn't have enough, and they weren't really happy with that. So now, we're going to see if FlyQuest can get some engages, not get, get bled out like they did in the first game, but it's a completely different look for Envy. It's not the same type of early game domination in terms of their champions like yep. across the board. Hashtag Envy win, hashtag Fly win. Head over to Twitter and let us know who you think is going to take it. Also, Aiden, do you think we're going to get a super leash? We haven't really seen him in ending. When the Maokai's finally back in, a little tricky though. Yeah, I feel like Super Leashes, I think the Maokai is going to put Saplings down for himself, and the Super Leash may come through from the rest of the team. We'll have to see. The game is going live. We are heading on to the Rift game number three. Six strong here in the Battle Theater today. And this is the final one that is going down. Who's going to take the victory? FlyQuest or Envy? We're on the Rift. Yeah, how are you doing, Riv? Your sixth game in. Doing great. Ah. Let's go for more. Woo. Can't oh. you tie a best of three? Yeah. Let's make it happen. Uh. <laughs> We'll see. I mean, that's the good news, is the games have to end at some point, Riv. Yeah, 42 true. minutes, doesn't matter. It'll happen eventually. But that's the thing is, there will be a result to this game, and whether the result is Envy winning and going a little bit higher up the standings mm -hmm. and making it so that FlyQuest are four matches away, four games behind uh, playoffs. That means that FlyQuest would have to win pretty much everything that's remaining, and then we'd almost have our top six teams locked in at that point. Whereas FlyQuest, if they win, it's not all locked in just yet, because Envy will be right there, just ahead of that pack that's under them. Slow moves in and out, especially when you're Lemon Nation on a Sona. <laughs> You'd be the first one to get caught, and you are not living for too long. Ooh, Turtle is the human sentry on that play. Gets himself to safety, obviously. Yeah, also a uh, ancient coin start here for Lemon Nation on the yep. Sona. A lot of people start the Spell Thieves because they love going for the Q and then the Auto attack, the power cord. Simple pokes. Making sure that they get that gold as well. That's kind of the thing about a Sona in lane too, is it's not that you uh, you have to worry about the poke, it's that you will be taking the poke. She's in range, she just hits Q. So why not? Yep. One bite. soccer ball, two soccer ball, three soccer balls. And then this last one, just a few more autos. Pop, pop, and 
done. So yeah, you set up the soccer balls, set up the saplings a little bit away from each other so they don't all go off at the same time. And Lyra actually got the super leash. So to answer your question, Riv, he gets that leash. He's going to go bottom. I believe he's going to flash body slam because he had it early. Don't always see that on Grog. He's going to try to go and upset this early game here. We saw it happen last time where FlyQuest just bled out after they got put behind. He's going to try it again. Oh, Owen went to walk to Ward. Thank gets him on that. Has the flash as well if they need to get some extra damage in. Turtle gets taken down by the Thunderlords of Hakuo. Yep, there goes the first blood and both summoner spells from Wild Turtle in exchange for zero summoner spells from Envy. So bottom lane, I said they're going to try to contest it. That's ah, over. Early game lead to the lane that's been able to poke out Turtle and Lemonation. Why not? Lyra starts there. We'll see where he heads next. Moon is going to take this chance to say, I uh, saw you bot side. No, he's actually going to have Seraph run towards him. So, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's the standard Great play cover. to go for uh, that top lane uh, side of the jungle afterwards. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to let that happen. You see Moon just starts traveling over there as soon as possible. And yeah, the barrel was set up there. The flash, Hakuho came up huge there. The dark binding is really the difference maker. Just to the left. Yep. And now if he lands another, Wild Turtle probably gets chunked out by the fact that the trap will come out afterwards. Maybe a net. So Hakuo, you know, can have some yeah. domination in this lane with zero summoner spells on Turtle. And the fact that they also had Seraph get that top part. Oh. Trap. Yeah, he doesn't have it yet. He's not level three. Yep, you're right. It was the net that did make it in, though. Man, that is going to be a hurt in Sona once they do get level three. If any more of those engages happen, you can see Lemon saying, might have one more chance to get up there and do this. I'll do it now. And you can see how much damage they took even then. Mm -hmm. Elimination, though, has the wind speakers, has the heal. Mm. Constantly heal up. Make it easy. Have those biscuits. Yep. Good to go. He's still actually sitting on two, so he hasn't really had to use too much. As yeah. They've been battling back and forth. Yeah, when you use the Ancient Coin on somebody who just turns mana into HP constantly, the mm -hmm. fact that you get missing mana from those uh, the mana coins, is that the ones that are worth gold? It actually ends up being a good conversion to your HP. So Elimination will be quite good and quite healthy, as well as he'll have a good mana pool as well. Some Krug life for Lyra as yeah. he finishes a full clear jungle even after going for that quick gank says yeah and looking for the w onto seraph first He'll hit have Ooh, brings him right back to the turret so it's hook shot crowd control into the twisted advance I like it because you're not really expecting moon to come flying out right after and now Lyra looking for the bot lane but there's Ooh. a ward there that's a few seconds on it too so if he goes in the bush you'll actually see it expire womp, womp. they see him though if he goes in the bush, you'll see the ward debris. And Backs right away. High. Yeah. Very, very low. Auto attacks. Auto attacks. Oh, he finally flashes. That's such a difficult mental moment to play back and forth. He's like, he's just walking. Oh, turret range. Turret range. Oh, one last shot. Hooks it out and rolls to safety with a caster shot following through. Very, very small slivers of health that FlyQuest was just able to walk out of two situations with. Nope. Moon may be looking for something here. Pop it over the wall. Oh, oh they see him. He takes it anyways. It's just at the last moment. And both teams were like, wait, whoa, reassess this. Can we take it? Yeah, he's just getting some space. I actually yep. don't think you can take it now because Ball's TPing back top. Seraph has teleport. Uh, Ball's going to actually ma Oh. That would have been pretty clutch if you flashed into that right in front of him. Yeah. And got the bop. I like it. Good play by Seraph to get out of there real quick. He'll get back to lane. Actually, lane resetting. Maybe. Probably have to teleport back. Yes, he'll TP back, he but will. he'll have to stand united when he hits level six very shortly. Good call. He's actually pretty close to getting that. Oh, Balls is actually going uh, multiple points into his W, the tactical sweep, so you can get HP back. Uh, that no longer gives HP when you hit minions, so you have to hit the enemy champion. Right. And I feel like a lot of Camille's ditched this. It's the safe build, but because you can't just vamp off of minions anymore, a lot of people just went back to the Q, the Precision Protocol Max, especially when it got buffed uh, to be 200% instead of 180%. Just got to be able to get those hits in. Tag it on. Hookshot makes that possible. Mm -hmm. We'll see Balls already playing aggressive. Moon with one approach to the top side. Lyra, however, making things count still. That bottom side gank that went to Hakuo. It's paying off a little bit as it was the CS lead, but it seems like from that gank, Turtle and Lemon have been able to hold on pretty well in that lane now. No real movement. Over towards mid, it was a slight roam with Niski and Lyra to make sure things were safe towards the red side. Trying to just get a, 
the location on Moon. They found him towards top. Yep, just farming away. Lyra going after high, though. This bottom lane just, as soon as they saw Lyra mid, it's like, time to shove. Time to get out of here. Back purchased. Both these bottom laners have not purchased. So we're sitting on 2,000 gold for Apollo, 1,500 for Wild Turtle. And they're not gonna anyways. <laughs> yep. minion, minion wave breathe. But, that's all. Cannon wave. Let's stay. And as a, as a jungler, uh, you need to come to this lane. Uh, when your bottom lane hasn't backed and there's this type of difference, there's no sight stone. They don't have enough wards in this part of the game to actually cover all the options. 100% you need to go bottom. And this is, is this even a come to your lane to wipe them out or come to lane help us push the turret so it, we can just back? Whatever you can get is All good. Right. If you get your bottom lane a better back, then that's worth it. If you can help them clear the wave, that's worth it. But if there's no way that they have enough wards this early on in the game to cover seeing you get down there. Yeah. There are no wards to right now see Niski taking Scuttle, not something you usually see from the mid laner to just happen. Eight minutes into the game, but it is very quiet on the home front, and it seems to be one of the safe things to do at this time. Hex Drinker built up by Fly, or High rather, on Fly. Yep, and you can see the bat comes through for Apollo, just trying to make sure that he gets a big cash in there, but allows for Wild Turtle to freely pick up this last minion wave and shove it into the turret to deny some CS. So. And the next can next wave is a cannon minion wave, so actually. FlyQuest will not lose as much as uh, Envy off this back that Envy took first. Package. Where's he going to use it? He's going to get a little pressure on this. Niski roaming as well. Could be Hako a little route. Hako Hako the no. right side. Niski's going to be coming through the river as well. Moon low. And they package straight home on this one. Flash forward. That's oh, the stun the ultimate after. coming in from Niski. It's not going to be enough, though, as Niski gets the stand united, but they pop him out of it. And now Seraph is going to possibly be going down. He throws his own shield on as he gets back to safety. Aqua and Lyra doing some work to trade back another kill as Lyra is now 1-0-1 with his first of the game. And this ended up being the plan. Instead of people coming to bottom, bottom's going to come to them. So Hakuho takes the back as a better back timer to roam, and he goes to the top side when something happens on the invade that FlyQuest went for first. Honestly, almost helped Seraph that he got bopped out of Stand United. He was able to move quicker than the channel time and get back to doing things for his team. A very interesting interaction between that fight. And now the minions in the mid getting cleared out. Boss is going to be able to clear up top side. Yeah, but another early game loss for FlyQuest here. Seraph double taunts off of the flash. Gets bopped away there. And Niski, this actually has played incredibly well. Goes for the, the Q after. And then, whoa, Moon turned around to try and maybe throw a sapling. But then the W there from Niski. He went a little too far forward. He gets killed by Balls afterwards. And then Balls not able to actually do much there, and that's the that's the beef I kind of have with the W Max on uh, uh, Camille. Because as soon as you get into a team fight, the precision protocol cooldown isn't as low. You don't get to Q as often. You don't get auto attack resets. You don't get to actually do as much damage. And a lot of your damage is loaded into that W, which is such a long cooldown. Yeah. It, it's just for sustain. And when you get in these skirmishes, you're actually pretty useless. Sometimes it feels bad to. Huh. You're obviously killing the target, but no, you're using that sweep on one person, trying yep. to get that main damage instead of it being a Q and then you sweeping the team. Exactly. It's a 10%. It's like a 10-second cooldown. It's a percentage of their HP, and it heals you. Mm -hmm. But if Woo. they're actually like right up in your face, they take like a very low base damage, uh, like 150 from an ability. So it's, it's pretty low, and you really want the precision protocol because it gives you utility as well because you move around faster after every hit. So that's where that W Max comes up a little short in those skirmishes that they were having. Relentless on this oh. bot side. Now Coyote. Just clearing the pitch. Safe play for everybody. And they get back up towards the mid lane. High roaming slowly away from certain death here between Lyra and Niski. And it looks like they organize back into the laning phase. Apollo and Hakuo having another good game. 112 to 91. Look at Hakuo. He's like Below half HP, chilling for a dark binding. <laughs> so subtle. Mm -hmm. I love it. If they have the Fog of War, they're going to play it all, all the time down there. I mean, you get either Wild Turtle Elimination at this point, it's going to hurt. 
but the Fates Call does make it a bit trickier. Mid lane, however, dash forward from high to try and push Niski off and kind of bluff the damage that could have been coming out from behind him. Maybe he wasn't bluffing. A slight roam from balls from the top side. That just seemed to be for scuttle control. Hakuo back in position, looking for the Dark Binding as he's gonna walk out on this one. I don't know if there's a fight, no Fates Call pulls. Things are all calm here, or down here on the bot lane. Uh, Lyric is also here, and so is Moon, but Moon's gonna root him, and there's TP as well as Stan United. I think he's called calm this off. on the bot lane. Yeah, there you go. Camille, gonna call it off, get a CS advantage on top. So Balls is actually a bit ahead, and we'll see what happens. I feel like your Seraph, you have to get something back here, and they're gonna keep going. Right against the wall, what's the focus? They only get through Lemon Nation. Fate's Call comes out. Like I said, it's going to be tricky, but the resources they pulled down here had two objectives, kills, but mainly that turret, and they are gonna get what they came for. Yep, Seraph still has teleport, so he can get back to that top side and not lose his own turret to the Camille. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna leave high to the mid lane to get some CS, but overall, that turret going down is a big deal. This was a bottom lane that they had ganked very early on and given an advantage to the Caitlyn Morgana so that the Kalista and the Sona really couldn't get off the ground early. So Wild Turtle's been struggling. But Lyra definitely had better early game moves in this game than he did in game one. I like that by Seraph. Knowing his Sunfire Cape would tick the melees too hard, he kept pulling to the right so he'd get that perfect farm at the turret. The mechanics, so good. Whether or not he did it, I liked it. <laughs> 3K on the side of Envy here. Now, it's not the time they have to start getting that pressure down just yet. The early game lead controlled very well throughout each of these games they've had. It's transitioning this past what FlyQuest is gonna start putting up as defense. They gave FlyQuest a little too much respect last game with four kills in the early part and a 14,000 gold lead. It went a little, a little extended. Dragon's gonna be just touched up for the moment, but this is forward control and to see if FlyQuest actually reacts. Let's see what happens. Oh, they react. Going after Niski here. He doesn't have vision inside that bush, so. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, hi. Flexing a little bit. Yeah, yeah here comes the Maokai ulti. Nature's grasp is perfect oh. for an engage like that if it's going to be the weak guy on the front line. And now Lyra finds himself in a bad spot. Quickly flashing the crescendo. Sounded great, but doesn't come up with any, any plays. <sighs> And so there's a lot of engage tools, like I said, champion select for FlyQuest. So they, they have the option to pull the trigger. They do, they'll get the Ocean Drake for it. So they get something instead of just bleeding out. Uh, they could have had more. Uh, <laughs> Lyra, per foot moon in pretty much perfect position to contest. And we'll see Ren smite now. All right, only one of them. Very big. Yeah, and now you have to go clear that mid wave. High is going to be the one to do so. Seraph answering back to the top. They're going to see High is quite low on mana here. Yeah, red buff. They're going to go for red buff here since it just came up. Uh, if the Camille collapses, then it becomes a bit of an issue with Stan United almost being off the cooldown. But they're not healthy enough to really kind of contest here. High just has mana. And that's going to be Apollo picking up a very early red buff for himself. 15 minutes, hands off to the ADC. Looks like they know with the back, or there's a ping at least from Seraph. They're going to start cruising towards the top side, yep. clear this out with the Peacemaker, and get this wave pushed. It's that lane swap time. So they got that bottom turret with your winning bottom lane. Just go ahead and push it out, give him that CS, put the Shen on the bottom side of the map, and play for Rift Herald soon. Triforce, balls heads back to lane, a good spike for him. Yep, I feel like Camille doesn't really become uh, much of a, a fantastic champion until she has Trinity Force and then Titanic Hydra. It's kind of like the other breaking point for her as soon as she has maxed Q and E. And that's another thing that I don't really like about the max W first is that it delays you maxing your E. Yeah. Delays you maxing both your hookshot and Q, which are your primary combat abilities. Uh, and it's surprising that he put five points into the W because he had a bit of a lead. I would expect him to transition a little bit earlier, but he was a champion that well, we aren't seeing too much of in kind of the middle of the season. It's kind of come back up now after it got a slight buff. He's ready to kind of factor in the clear that Seraph is just going to keep hitting at him. Mm -hmm. The Sunfire Cape will push a bit so he can sweep kick back and then hopefully provide the damage for the team. Well, as he will. He is still a Camille. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. As you do. 40 minutes, it's going to be a time bomb. <laughs> oh. 
It's lit, Riv. <laughs> the fuse is lit. It's starting to go. We got about 30 minutes. Is it, Riv? Is it? it? it <laughs> is might it be. lit? It might be. Ah. Yeah. There slow, looks like there is one here, slow though. Slow-burning fuse. Because you have the Caitlyn, the trap set up. It's one of the reasons people ban the Caitlyn, because the traps are just so oppressive. Uh, and you can just siege and force things like that. But right now, trying to force onto Seraph under turret. High actually got aggro there. Oh, very close to going down. At least one more shot's gonna be necessary with the hits come in. Balls on the top side finally finds a bit with the help from High. Yep. Balls ends up getting that kill for himself. But that's gonna be Rift Herald in that top turret traded for that bottom bottom turret that you would think. But no, Niski's actually gonna defend the bottom turret. Almost. Good retribution kill for his teammate. Lyra is able to pick that up as they drop down balls mm -hmm. from the, the bot side as he roamed. But Teleport is up. He may be able to get back into this game quite quickly. Yeah. Advantage. Envy trying to work fast off of this. Advantage to Envy, though. They got the top turret. They got the Rip Herald. And they actually lost nothing except the one-for-one -one trade in terms of top laners. That's it. And they get a turret in mid with Rip Herald. So that's two turrets. Let's see what Lyra does here. Ooh. That was a heck of a lot of crowd control going around. Lyra's trying to find the target that would be the best priority for the team. Stand United helps him a little bit. Remember, that's not a turret. That's Shelly. And that's going to be helping them take a few more out. And they're just going to try to optimize here. While Turtle is still pushing top, now he's coming to join in mid and try to help them wave clear. But I feel like he's not going to offer much as they go back to just clearing out the waves. Bot lane got pushed in. This is a full reset from Envy after they take that mid turret. Yeah, Moon popped the ultimate, but Envy actually played quite well around it. He pops the ulti after the uh, Lyra engage in the turnaround. And then everybody stacks up. Hakuo takes it for Apollo. Perfect. And because the ulti only hits one person per route, you just stand behind, and then they're able to re-engage. And he gets in there and gets the taunt. So Seraph, yeah, comes up pretty big afterwards. What a good guy. Hakuo <laughs> taking the hugs for Apollo what to a keep good him alive. Guy. Yeah. That was actually well played from Hakuho to stand in front of the, the ultimate from Moon, who honestly, like, I was talking to him a bit about Maokai. It's like some people just haven't had as good of a read on the meta, so they aren't as practiced on these champions. And it's why we were seeing like a Cho'Gath priority from him over the Maokai. He knows it's powerful, but it just looks like he may not have had as much practice in terms of the setup or in terms of uh, being able to start these fights. He understands the power of the champion now but if there's only a finite amount of practice time to put in into the week and when you're throwing darts at a dartboard for the meta and what's going to be left up and you kind of miss the mark you're playing catch up during the games it's a messy looking dartboard this week oh yes for oh yes it is for everybody in a good way it's their choice to play that but we are getting a lot of different picks and unique ones coming in this fight however not unique to envy's early game they're trying to get more kills here at the start and they are able to drop one more time, ball. Oh, they want to kill Seraph so bad. Also take down high. Seraph stays alive. He's just stacking armor. Yep. It's gonna be very hard to kill, even if you oh. high to the fight. Wait, but but no. He gets flown back to his auto attack range. Tries to use the crescendo immediately as they go for Hako. He flashes out. Do they all live? Does Apollo pick up a kill for himself? The teleport now coming in for Seraph. He's gonna get back to lane. Apollo flashes the safety. The Ren comes in. That's the kill for Seraph. May be able to clean up another one, but it is Moon tanking the turrets. So they get out. I don't safety. think they're gonna get away though. Here comes Niski. Wait, they're, pin yeah, the they're pinging all the way down. Yep. It's going to be Lyra near the second tier turret if they make it that far. Double scatter the weak. They're gonna be able to drop Moon and Lemon Nation Once thinks more. he's safe, but here comes Lyra to take him out. Yep. What is going on this game, Riv? I wish you could tell. Could you tell me? That just happened. All right. Ah, uh, the Baron on the table. I don't think they'll do it, though. 20 seconds on Moon. They'd have to all regroup right now, and they don't have Apollo, that consistent damage dealer. Just take care of the waves. Ah. Uh. So, Envy, now we're looking at a 6,000 gold lead for them. 20 minutes like, in. It's the skirmishes. FlyQuest tried to take skirmishes constantly. They did it during the middle of the split when I was cast them really early on, and it was biting them. They tried to go for it here. Seraph avoids so much damage, and like I said, you can avoid the true damage from Camille there with the Spirit's Refuge on Seraph. Then he gets the taunt. They finish him there, and there's just so much peel. Hai gets picked up here as well, and there's a Ninja Tabi plus Bramble Vest, so he's reflecting a lot of damage yeah. simultaneously. And this... God. I'm not bad, I'm just disappointed. Dad mode? 
Uh, and, and there's a lot of pressure on FlyQuest this split. Uh, moves like that, you can take that extra second to breathe. And Apollo got to save his flash because of that until later on in the right. fight. So even if you throw it straight at him and get his flash, it's better. I believe you. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. I don't need you to, but I appreciate, I appreciate it. Appreciate you. <laughs> appreciate you. 6,000 gold envy continues to grab up all the objectives on the map. That's going to be their first Drake, but the turrets are also falling in their favor for a bit of extra early gold. The outer three are down, and they've only lost bottom, a place that we're really not going to see FlyQuest uh, too frequently, as you already see this tur top turret is getting fought over here. Should be all right. Yeah. Paul's just going pretty hard on this one. I actually am uh, kind of evaluating this matchup as it goes. I was talking about how the uh, Shen can avoid a lot of the damage using Spirit ref Spirit's Refuge, right. which he does. But I actually think Balls, he's going for the Ravenous Hydra here, not the Titanic Hydra. And Seraph already has Bramble Vest. He's going to cut a lot of the value of having that Ravenous Hydra in the 1v1 split push down because you're not going to be healing as much. Even the Tactical Sweeps, the really W that point. he maxed first, is going to get cut a That's bit actually, there. I was watching that in the last fight as well. Him and High having a bit of trouble getting that Warlords to help, <laughs> getting their uh, healing to come back in. Bramble Vest, uh, pretty strong. Yeah, it's also going to affect the Sona. It's going to affect the Callista. Yeah. But when she buys Rune Runan's Hurricane, uh, she inadvertently gets Bramble Vest on her because she's <laughs> hitting the person. She's accidentally doing it. So even if you're not hitting the Shen, yeah. your Runan's bolts will hit the Shen and then apply it to you. So sad life for the Callista. And range life here for Envy. Hawthorne Apollo just able to auto attack in. Really? Yeah. This guy is Eagle Eye right now. Wild Turtle felt completely safe, and I thought he was too. Envy had a different idea in mind. I swear we need a, swap, a stopwatch for that ability, because that was, that was one of those Morgana bindings that you meme about, where it's like, I could make I, a whole breakfast and have lunch, and then you know I'll go out to brunch with cantaloupe, and then come back, and I'd still be bound by this. I've always said that Morgana bindings have those arms you, in Zelda, the first Zelda that pull you out of the dungeon. They have those that stick out and just grab you when you least expect it. That binding can reach you from anywhere. And right now, Hakuo is showing just that. Fog of War bindings right in your face bindings here towards top side. Yeah, pretty ambitious. Minion jumps in front of that one to save the life of Balls. Yeah, pretty ambitious, though, from... Uh... Lyra to go for that because Seraph was backing and now he's just going to head towards the bottom side. Balls wants to back. Grab his Hydra completed. And we'll see what that does up against the Thornmail that's now been completed by Seraph. And the Thornmail, make no mistake about it, super high value in this game because it's going to apply to Balls. Moon is going to be auto attacking as well and that's going to cut a lot of his healing. High has the Warlords and that'll also reflect basic attack damage. And then the Callista, same thing. So I definitely think that's the purchase to have here as a tank. So Seraph is actually itemizing quite well. Bring in the sting without really having an offensive item. It's one way to do it. Yeah, and so also, really cool stuff in the game. It's funny because like some of the uh, Shens go for Tiamat or Titanic Hydra for the damage. A little, yeah, a little bit. Uh, he went for both Sunfire Cape and Thornmail. So if you stand in a minion wave, you actually reflect a lot of the damage and burn the minions down. So he does have a decent amount of wave clear if he just stands in the minions and takes aggro. So that Randuin's for Lyra. He's going to be quite helpful with his Warden's Mail out. Shut down Wild Turtle a little bit. Slow him down in his roll. Everything is going to be working against these ADs. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I think I just got a Morse code met. Sent help? <laughs> Timmy in the well? Oh, S. Where is this Knight's Vow? I believe it's I on, uh, on Apollo. Yeah, Apollo. I thought it was. I've seen it on a few others. But mostly that AD carry throughout the games. Lyra, you can see where Apollo is in conjunction with him due to that Knight's Vow arrow. But this left and right initiation is going to leave Pi quite low. Another sphere on Lemon, too. Brings him down to about half HP. FlyQuest is starting these like they're playing against a pure poke team. Yeah, and now Niski has that maxed Force of Will W. So every time he throws it out, it'll do that extra true damage on top of it, too. So the ability's just base damage of throwing out a W is pretty high. Throwing a Q on top of it, I mean, that, that's how Jensen died <laughs> up against Bjergsen. The WQ, it's just so strong ever since it got that added true damage on top of it. Jockeying for position. Balls with a bit of a route down towards mid lane, but he could also be pushed off here if Envy decides to bring all members. 
seems like they're gonna go quite fast at that once they have the coordination too. And bot lane's being slowly pushed by Seraph, so biding their time, they're waiting for that engage where they can pop somebody back with a flask. Yep, they're chasing him though. I mean, this is like around the world. Oh, what a flash catch in. Seraph able to hit him on the taunt, but still blasted back. So Balls has some room to play with. Gonna maybe try to hook shot past them. He's got a Does W not back here. Saw that binding. Oh. Aqua Turtle goes down the headshots and lockups. Coming in from Apollo and the rest of the Where team. Where you going? Flashes forward with the headshot. Oh. Goes for the hit. It wears off. Just in time for the kill. Almost had enough with that shield. And now it's going to be Balls falling once again in a 2v1 situation. Possible binding from Hako if he throws it over to his left side. They dodge out, or I should say Balls dodges out. I mean, but I don't know where he's going to go on Exactly. This. He's going to have to pull something tricky here. Didn't run by Niski. Niski, he's going to go by Should the turret. Let me know hook shot after that. Yeah. Whee. Into the darkness. Apollo, your turn. All right. Guard every exit. Where he at? He's got to go top right, left, bounce over. Can they find him before we do? Wait, does that make sense? No, I'm just kidding. Ah, they know. They're like process of elimination. We found him. All right, all right. Great. All right, all right. All right, all right. Like, Lyra, forget Lyra, it. Lyra, Lyra's turn. Let's go. Lyra, get in there. Ah. Uh, is he nope. back? He's gonna wait. When he walks over the ward, Lyra may go for it. No, him. they gave up. I no. Think, oh, wait. Yes. <sighs> Give me what we want. They're begging it. Uh, four, one, two, one. Oh. No. Mission impossible. Great job by Balls getting out of that one alive. Also, just pulling Seraph and the team around the map for so long, they don't really lose too much control. Yeah, well, a little, little bit of chaos. Meanwhile, I actually have to say, that was a 2v4 in mid lane, right? We had seen Seraph, Lyra, and Hakuo chasing bull one person. This is a 2v4. Engage happens, Niski flashes to the side, perfect. Ooh. Oh my god, that was disgusting. That was so disgusting. That was an incredible outplay between Apollo and Niski, and they trade two for zero in a 2v4. Now, those are the carries of Envy that have been doing so much work for them this split. When Niski came in, Apollo has been firing on all cylinders pretty much the entire split. Even in their losses, he's still not like one of the guys who's costing them games, and he's able to get a level advantage. The team is playing around him a little bit more, and he's definitely shown a lot of improvement this split. Good old Wiz. And that was right there. He's playing aggressive, right? Good old Wiz would have played in the back line and would have been a little bit more scared, but now he's just <laughs> popping forward and being aggressive. Apollo, he's on a mission. And he is getting good results out of these. 30 minutes on the clock coming up. 10,000 gold lead on the dot. Five to one in turrets. They aren't really ready to be pushed. So this may look like a fight from Envy if they try to oh, they're looking for Apollo. Stand. United immediately coming in. Just missing the backside of Camille. They're gonna still have to chase out. And it looks like they slow Lyra. down on this. Lyra's gonna try to flank. He has body slam flash and he has cask. It's back Lemon Nation. They get the tank though. Moon's gonna take a while to go down. They decide to hold most of Niski's abilities as well. Yeah. Buying time. Fight. Buying time for balls to push bottom. And once again, we're back at 10k gold lead. And FlyQuest are just trying to stall. So they're waiting for the Camille to scale. I don't feel like she scales hard enough though. Uh, and now the Baron has started up. TP for balls. Where is it at? I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think they're gonna try to go for a steal here. Moon can twist it, advance in, a good, a good hit. Seraph already leaves, not gonna be able to get in. Seraph makes them turn. There's the TP. One second. There's the just below. Will he call? be able to get into a good fight? Wow, Lemon Nation melting immediately. It's Camille trying to get in from the top side, but he just cannot. Lyra low, Seraph low, but they're in the perfect spot to deliver a bit of a long range attack, and it's a double kill here for Niski. Did not use anything on the mid game engage or mid lane engage for that second tier turret, and they may be able to turn around once again with this Baron and look at the side lanes. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Like FlyQuest, they contest it after it's taken with the TP from Balls. He didn't even get the bottom turret there. He TP's in. They all back off. That hits. Elimination doesn't have crescendo, so he doesn't have follow up there. Nope, they don't have numbers advantage to follow up immediately. Balls jumps to the wall, not able to jump in, and they're just tunneling into a choke point where they can put down traps, and Niski can just play Syndra and throw balls in a single spot. Like, create the ball pit. Go there, play it, play There it. are a lot of things wrong with the way that this is being played. Also, when uh, Wild Turtle threw in Lemon, you see, as we said before, uh, the that person, that champion, go back to their auto yes. attack range, which would have given Lemon quite a good distance back into the river. 
but he backed up against the wall, mm -hmm. only about two Teemos away. Yeah. Bad news for Azona, who but, is paper thin. But at that point, he's sacrificing himself because he doesn't have Crescendo. True. In that flash. <laughs> like, True. You threw in Azona. You also are choosing Congratulations, where you're you go. did it. Like, there's no <laughs> follow up. How are you supposed to actually get a good fight off of that? The situation was like, I, and this has been kind of the issue for FlyQuest, is they don't evaluate the whole picture fast enough to really make the right call. And I don't know if that's like information being funneled in through high uh, when he's behind. Is, is it good enough? Is Are enough people talking about it? And now they're trying to cut off Lyra, but here comes Seraph, and they might turn this around. There goes Lemon. Instant. They think they can turn something around, but Envy seems to be just popping out of the woodwork here. They only saw two members. Three seconds later, all five are approaching that fight. Lemon Nation just went down as he's coming back up in 20 seconds. And FlyQuest getting pushed around the map. We'll have Wild Turtle back in here. They're going to have to protect top side. Yep, got to try to do something here. Hi, holding off, but we got to say Envy. Haku is playing pretty crazy with those picks. Absolutely. And amazing. Nisky actually could have killed High there if he had just thrown the ulti. <laughs> Not trusting the damage completely. I mean, there's reasons that Morgana and Thresh were banned by FlyQuest oh, on the yeah. blue side of game two. It's because Hakuo controls the lane and then the game when he gets the chance. The rest of the team as well doing very good this game and able to really pressure their advantages. Now they're inside the Balls base. On the back. They keep it going though. Hextech ultimatum onto Niski. Instant oh, ult to him. He flashes over. It's going to be a one for one. The retribution kill comes through, but the damage still following from Envy. Fate's call is in. I think he'll put himself just beside Wild Turtle and keep the safety there. Crescendo in just a few seconds. It might be a turnaround that catches one player off guard. Flashes there for Lemon Nation. Crescendo in five. They're waiting. The inhibitor's gonna be taken down. Oh. He gets popped, he gets knocked. Crescendo cannot be used. That's another kill coming in for Apollo. Perfect timing on Envy. Yeah, Lyra with the cast there. Gets Lemon Nation into the team and he just drops. And now they're just pushing out waves. Here comes another teleport. That's Seraph joining. They're going to try to end. Locked one down. Nature's grasp. One last hug from FlyQuest. And they're going to be looking at some Nexus swords. Flash forward. Gets the heal just enough from a headshot. Apollo's not going to be able to finalize the kill. A quick ace in the hole to the face of Moon. And the final shot Apollo to kill him. Looking Gotta for be more careful. movement. Also had that turret aggro, but the team's able to skip around and work its way out. They are going through the batting order. One player after the other as FlyQuest is doing their damnedest to keep the base up. There's enough low health here for something to happen. Now There's that Lemon Nation is back, Crescendo comes out. Hextech onto Apollo, one of the healthiest members when they could have cleared out more than that. Oh. Stand United now oh, trying oh, oh, oh. to come in and FlyQuest live a little bit longer to tell the fight well, and Balls fight another day. Pacing. If he can get Hakuho, oh my God. <laughs> All right, just walking into stuff. Yes, bottom lane has a minion wave. Fight over it, fight all your teammates for it. That's what I like to see. Oh, no they, lane assignments. They have to it's share. It's it's every man for himself at that point. But yeah, so Shendo they were waiting for. Yeah. Here it is. Black Shield ends up being a little bit late. So Apollo gets locked up there by the Hectech ultimatum. You can just keep throwing spears into him. And then they end up constantly just dealing damage and trying to turn the game around. And now FlyQuest. No, I think Envy were like, all right, we have a gold lead. You know, let's try to do something that we didn't do last game. And last game, they kept pushing, right? And it took them forever. It took them 42 minutes. They didn't have enough team yeah. fights. They were like, all right, you know, no more criticism around that. Let's try fighting. Let's have an engage. Let's try to Absolutely. end the game here at 35 minutes. And that's one where they give a little bit back. But the score is still 69,000 to 54,000 or 55,000. So Quite a 14,000 gold lead for Envy at 35 minutes. And we have a quick pause. On that 35-minute mark, uh, Hakuo getting a pause in the game, playing Morgana so damn hard his contact fell out. Oh. So we're going to have to get that, that back in so he can hit these bindings. Might check that contact for uh, some bionic tech. Yeah. Maybe that's how he's hitting these bindings. Yeah, We'll have to see, though. He's been having a great game on the Morgana. Exactly. We had to get him some uh, contact solution. Yes. Wash it. Make sure that it's... Ah, just put it back in. No! Man. You got to be rugged. No! Oh, it fell out. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, people no. in the crowd are like, no. Yeah, Contacts, yeah, yeah. don't do that. No, no, no. I was uh, dating somebody who did that once, and uh, <laughs> she ended up like, oh, my eye really hurts. And it's like, wow, why, why does it hurt? <laughs> then she ended up I having have rocks like, in my eye. Yeah, basically, she got a uh, slightly scratched cornea, and yep. I was like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> you, 
it's not worth it. Like, not something you can deal with as a, a pro league player as well. Need both of those. And uh, like we said, Haka will be able to play very well. 2-0 and 12. 20 kills on the team. 14 he has participated mm -hmm. in. He's been all over the map this game. And again, a super strong early game from the Envy bot lane. And they've done it in different sorts. They're bringing out uh, different champions. Yeah, and Lyra gave him that level three gank very early on oh, to kill yeah. Wild Turtle. But then Wild Turtle kind of recovered from it later and oh, got both there summoner spells two. back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, level two. You were right. He was there It two. wasn't a full level three clear. It was a very fast, unexpected one. But that's what you kind of have to, you know, Take into account when you're in a professional setting, yeah. is there are just so many different things that can happen early on in this game. Jungler can come level two, level one sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> you used to see that with level the reds three? when you had you had really strong uh, early game grades. You do a quick red and you're like, I'm coming, whatever. I don't yeah, have yeah. much crowd control, but it's enough to kill you or make you flash immediately. Exactly. And chase them down. And now we'll see. Contact in. Yep. Bionic Morgana Q's ready to go. So they're, they're having a little fun. They're chatting the game. They said, remake, same picks. They said, ready. We're going back in. <laughs> then back in the game high. About to come back up. Envy feeling pretty good about this one. And Apollo's also waiting on those death timers. Overextending their stay a little too much inside the base when Lemon Nation came back up with Crescendo. Yep. Cloud Drake goes over to Envy. And now FlyQuest get to farm their base. And it's on Envy to keep pushing. Use their advantage. Try to go for that last inhibitor. Hey. Uh, at least somebody's having a party. That's right. Is it a Jenga party? I gotta know. <laughs> You're not invited. Still uh, quite a bit of Drakes in this game. We have two games in a row with three Ocean Drakes. Unprecedented. But yeah, third Drake uh, Cloud going over to Envy. Elder Drake still weighs away here as we just saw that going down. But a minute and a half onto Baron. Not even really necessary for Envy here with the kind of power they've been putting down on the map. So they might just decide to walk it in until FlyQuest has to deal with super minions in every lane before they even walk towards Baron. Yeah, can't really look at it at all. And now they're in that position where they're playing on the back foot. How much do they scale? We did see Niski. It was hard for him to hold up against the dive from Balls. And so maybe they'll take that into account and peel for him a little bit more. But we'll see. This is the Caitlyn putting down the traps. No fuzzy cuffs today. Oh. Stopped it. Good Kevlar on the side of FlyQuest. That's just a big free for them in Moon. Nature's Grasp just saying we need some breathing room to clear out what's happening in mid lane. They had to get Wild Turtle over there. One last shot, though, coming in. It's all a futile attempt here as FlyQuest tries to save the last of their base. Yeah, and this is going to be one of those games where you go, man, Malkai looks really weak because they're just playing around. Yeah, why did you want him so bad? I know, right? Uh, like, oh, he's obviously underpowered. Uh, but the Nature's Grasp, the ultimate, they're just playing around it really yeah. well. Also, he's three levels down. Like Moon has been struggling pretty much the entire game. And he doesn't have really any armor. No Ninja Tabis. It's just the uh, Chain Vest form. So Apollo pretty much just shreds him. The Cho'Gath definitely seeming to fit the position of play they oh, have whoa, a bit whoa, more. Niski. The position, however, is the Fates call in. Niski goes down. FlyQuest looks to pull the trigger. Apollo the focus now. High tries to get back into a good spot, but he cleanses it. out. Gets the shot. A double kill in for Wild Turtle. And how do they keep going? Turtle's on the top left. Seraph what is the his hell? target. And High is able to now take down Seraph. <laughs> what the hell indeed? FlyQuest just about back in it as they head for Baron. <laughs> There's no way they can get the Baron rib. And then they turn this around. They went and said, all right, priority targets, let's go. The Maokai, you know what I'm saying, Flash W, it's enough there. They get on top of Niski, they kill Niski, then the Hextech ultimatum comes through on Apollo, and he can't get out of that, he can't QSS that, and then they take him out afterwards. They got the damage dealers down, and then they're able to follow up, and this is going to get Moon back into this game as well. It's still a large gold advantage. But that gave Moon two levels there. One off the fight, one off the Baron because of catch-up experience. And then this gives the entire team a bit of time to scale. Because Apollo is already six items. So he's not going to get any stronger than he was in this fight. Let's right here, this happens the Fates call comes through. That was the root onto Niski because he walked up with the Flash W. And then the Fates call after. Apollo then gets Hextech Ultimatum. Gets knocked out. Their balls gets knocked out. So it ends But Wild Turtle didn't care because the front line of Envy was peeling for 
their AD carry because he was their last threat available. So Wild Turtle gets to walk up because he's not one of the people providing CC. Yeah. He's just providing damage, and you're, they're not kind of trading divers at that point or trying to put threat on the Wild Turtle. They're trying to protect Apollo. All right. So 42 minutes, almost there. The time bomb. Yeah, it's, Camille, it's coming lit, online. Rip. It is lit. I told you, we lit the fuse a long time ago. The dynamite will soon explode, and it is going to be megatons of TNT at this point. Somebody, it's going to be the all-out one fight straight down at this point. I'm sure FlyQuest is going to need a few minions because they're still going through three turrets in each lane. Four, if you count the Nexus turrets. Five, really, since you have to take both. So they have their work cut out for them, and it's almost a few fights away for FlyQuest, but Envy wants to make it one more. Yeah, Envy want to fight as soon as possible because they want to be able to get these inhibitors down, get three inhibs pouring minions in, but it allows FlyQuest time to scale. Like right now, you said it's a time bomb. It's a time bomb that's actually in FlyQuest's favor. Right. Because they'll get to the point where they can die pretty much every time. Here come Blake. the Bramble. Turtle trying to find the back of They're the fight. They're gonna get two tanks. What a perfect time. NALCS 1 joining us as FlyQuest continues to come back in this game. Backs against the wall the entire time as we are in game three here and grabbing up the other viewers from stream one. And so, to answer the question of, you know, why I wanted Maokai so badly, even though he was behind, why? He was three levels down, now, only two levels down, Lyra's maxed out on levels, he's catching up. Even though he was behind, Maokai's still relevant. The ultimate, the Flash W, he's, so he's always a, useful. He's a baby spruce earlier, and now he's a big sequoia. Is that what you're yeah, telling me? Yeah, we're getting that, that redwood coming in. All right, all right. Hopefully the team can drive through or under him on these initiations <laughs> as they get into these fights. Still waiting for the Elder Drake. It's going to be big. 30 seconds. That has to be stopped by FlyQuest because it puts so much power in the hands of Envy. Yeah, but lucky for them, FlyQuest, they have that Baron buff for 50 seconds more. They'll shove the waves out, and their bottom inhibitor is about to respawn. So they're actually very close to having uh, all of their inhibitors back up, so they could contest it. And we'll check summoner spells real quick. Niski has Flash, so that everybody pretty much has their summoner spells. It's only Moon who's really lacking that Flash here that's super important. He's got 25 seconds on that. You want to have that flash up as Moon so you can flash onto Niski again. This is on Hakuo to Black Shield the right person. Make sure they don't get CC'd. Niski now has Banshee's Veil. Hi! Make sure he doesn't get caught there. Blows the cleanse and the Valkyrie. Slowly playing this one now, at least waiting for that Valkyrie to come back up. Great traps coming in from Apollo. Does fly. Oh. Get caught here. Balls gets knocked back. Remember, it's all of this used for the GA. Nature's Grasp is going to lock down the team, but does that mean FlyQuest can get to the back line? Niski and Apollo are in a perfect spot as the locker of the Iron Solari keeps them healthy. They're trying Nature to chip away at the tank wall, though. Can they find the back line? FlyQuest rerouting Whoa. and trying to find a way back in, but they throw each other into the frying pan. Hakuo trying to lock him down. Balls is getting on to Apollo, but it just won't work. The mission in favor of Envy. Turtle getting one last shot. The ace locking him down. And it looks like Envy's headed for the Nexus. Envy says, not today. No comeback for FlyQuest here. And Envy, you're going to walk this one in and take a 2-1 victory over FlyQuest. Usually a little bit longer than they wanted, but always building better on that early game advantage to find the late game a little bit sooner. Envy coming up with another win and helping themselves oh so much as they look for a playoff spot at the end of the season. Envy take down FlyQuest 2-1. to one. And now they put a four-match distance. Yeah, that's what you can do. You can laugh that one off. Instant laughter. They put a four-match distance now, putting themselves at 8-6. and six. FlyQuest at 4-10, and 10, being the seventh-place team. But Envy still have that playoff spot almost locked in for themselves. But the rest One, of their two, schedule, three, Envy. Envy is not a pretty match, but the rest of their schedule, it doesn't get any easier. They play four teams yeah. that are in playoffs or in those playoff positions right now. Tough stuff in an ever-changing meta. We saw a heck of a lot of things throughout this, even in our first comp or game of the day here on NALCS 2. But Envy able to come up with another strong win. Huge power coming out of that bot lane continuously. And Hakuo just on fire this game with the bindings left and right, setting up the team in multiple situations. Yeah, Hakuo did a really good job of those early bindings. He helped out a ton on that level one and was able to help push the momentum of the game. But that last fight, that final fight, is one that I, uh, I'm i like, that looked like it was a situation 
where FlyQuest wanted to play it slowly and balls got caught. Do you want to see it again? I do want to see okay, it again. Okay, let's see the final fight one more time. Yeah. High actually wants to back because his package is up here. So if he backs, he comes in with more fight power. Balls gets caught. Binot over the wall. That's the big thing there is he actually has to blow his flash very early on, and the rest of the team comes to reinforce. High doesn't get to use his Baron and Power Recall. They try to guard the Guardian Angel, and there, the Crescendo doesn't hit Apollo or Niski. Yeah. Moon flashes in after his W and his R are used. Or flashes out afterwards. So he tried to advance, but he's not onto Apollo. He's not onto Niski. They both get protected. And the power of FlyQuest's comp was that they were able to dive onto Apollo and Niski and put a ton of threat on them. And that didn't get to happen in this last fight. And that actually may have been a FlyQuest victory if they had played it slower and Balls wasn't able to get caught there. There were a few of the times when they were allowing uh, Envy to get in the base, and they said, oh, we'll catch you as you're, you're straggling out, those few Caboose members. Yeah. And then they, then they try to take a fight and, in the jungle. And that's one of those fights where you're not prepared for it, right? You're like, I'm going to back, get my package, and then Balls somehow gets caught, and you're not really watching that so much, but you're immediately, they're saying, we have to fight. Oh, I'm, caught. Right. I'm caught, I'm caught, I'm caught, I need help. Right, And then you have to reinforce that person because you're not using your abilities optimally. You're using the ultimate from Maokai to try and peel. You're not using it on the right members. You're not flash Wing forward because yep. there's no Camille to help you with the dive because she's in the GA. So it's a completely scattered fight where I do feel like FlyQuest, that was a situation where Envy definitely pulled the trigger at the right time because they caught them yeah. with their pants down at one of the only moments that they could have there at the end game. Said the fuse was lit, man. Finally got to the end there. Oh, blew up, oh, finally. Blew up you, you're not a liar. You're not a liar. So for a first-hand account on that series, let's hear from D-Gun and Envy's mid laner. Thank you very much, Riv and Zyrene. I am joined by Niski now. Niski, that was a pretty hard-fought series here, but how did you guys bounce back from the loss from Team Liquid in this match against FlyQuest? Okay, so everyone knows that our goal is to make playoffs, but when we lost against Team Liquid, we were... I can say disappointed, I guess, mm -hmm. because we wanted to do two week, so we were like kind of secured for playoffs. And then, I mean, we we won playoffs, so I don't think we how to say like when it was like a Team Liquid, mm -hmm. we didn't really like talk about it a lot because we wanted to win uh, one game at least. And yeah, that's it. So you guys were able to move on now. In your first interview here with Freak, you said that you coming over with a roster full of different languages, you said it didn't matter too much as long as you guys were able to build rapport and communicate with each other other ways. Do you feel like you've been able to do that so far? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, for example, with Lyra, it was like really hard to communicate. I mean, it's still hard right now, but it's getting better and better. And I think we did a pretty good job right now. I mean, last split, they... We were in relegations. I mean, I wasn't here, but yeah, Envy was in relegations, and now we're just aiming for playoffs. So yeah, I think we, yeah, we're improving. So looking towards playoffs, what are some of the big things that you, Niski, want to work on so that to make sure that you guys find success? Okay, so I think my mid game is like not the best one right now. I make a lot of mistakes, and I think that's it. And I mean, my in macro wise, I'm not uh, perfect right now since I didn't play competitive a lot. And yeah, I think if my mid game is better and if I can match with the team better and then I think we can make playoffs easily. Easy, very easy. And you made this last game look a little bit harder, but you were able to bring it home. Thank you very much, Niski, for the interview. For more on this series, let's get send it over to Dash and Mark. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, D God. A great win out of Envy. They're gonna feel lucky to come away of the weekend one and one because again as we recall they lost to one two team liquid up here against FlyQuest two teams well below them in the standing so they were expected victories and this one did not come easily but they did manage to bank the W. Right like you heard Niski say there he was not happy at all about the uh, loss to team liquid and the team decided to not tunnel on just we have to win the next game let's focus on this let's not worry as much right and uh, exactly. it didn't look that much better today honestly it was it was still very very close like this game for how much of a lead they built should never have been coming down to some late game team fights. Right again, that's kind of that old envy creeping back in. Build a lead, but then not entirely sure how to close it in a clean fashion. They do get the W, as was mentioned, with that crucial final team fight. Let's track all the way back, though, because as we saw in the Immortal yeah. CLG series in Game 3, 
Caitlin left up by the red side team, picked up by the blue side team. This time successful, as CLG was not successful with it in the other series. Right. People hadn't played it in a little while. We saw Zach get through one time. People realized, okay, Zach's definitely still crazy. Caitlin, this time around, uh, I would say still obviously very lane dominant. You saw the fact that Apollo and Hakuho with that Morgana pick, which should have been countered in some sense by the uh, Sona that Lemon took later, it still didn't end up mattering. Caitlin continued to push in lane, was harassing under turret, and took the turret on her own, basically, 12 minutes into the game. Exactly. So very much still a prevalent champion. If we wanted to check the power level, power level is checked. She's still very powerful. <laughs> uh, outside of all that, though, we got Niski back on a signature champion in Syndra up against high signature champion in Corky. But Niski did a lot of work, picked up a lot of early kills to give them that control of the early and mid game because Syndra's most powerful moments are that period of game. Right, and I think you can kind of see that he's been playing a fair amount of Talia recently, and it's not like he's mechanically bad with the champion. It's just that... Team Envy does not seem to play around it that well, uh, especially compared to like when they had Pyrian, and, and for the most part, they would use it to grab turrets and objectives and all that. Uh, Niski is much more of a carry-oriented player, and you right. saw this game on the Syndra, able to find a lot of early game plays. Similarly, when he was playing Cassiopeia and things like that, was able to match up very well versus some other good laners. I want to dive into our only replay. It comes 20 minutes into the game. This one in favor of Envy and Ace, essentially, here at 20 minutes. And this is what we were saying, where this is like not a super clean series overall. Seraph's holding a turret as it goes down, tries to kick this one off, and High is just in the area and the thing is this should be a great fight for uh, the side of FlyQuest but they just misplay you see balls miss both his E and his W there Sarah's able to kite out with some help from Lyra they eventually find the kill onto ball the Q on the Corky a lot of skill shots not hitting right and it buys time for Niski to finally get down meanwhile on the top side FlyQuest is getting opened up on as they get hit by some of Hakko's bindings uh, and missed they, skill shot right here. Yep, missed skill shot by Lemonation, missing out on Apollo. Moon coming in a little bit late, is able to find some roots on people, but eventually this fight goes on for so long, it takes them forever to kill Apollo. That Look at your mini map. Yeah. Gragas and Syndra have only made it halfway across the map. Remember, they were just in the bot lane responding to the 2v2 that had started down there. They will make their way all the way across the map to pick up these final two kills. Right, and it ends up being a cross map ace that somehow Niski is involved in both halves of. Uh, but it just shows that this game was not super clean, was not well played. And even despite this this huge lead that they're getting right now, they're about to get this ace. Eventually they find a bear and then they, they take everything down to the, the you know the inhibitors. Right. And that's when they start throwing. You see 39-ish minutes into the game is when those, those big mistakes started coming in. And that's right. after this game should be over. 16K goal lead, are you kidding me? Yeah, you see, I, I don't wanna, we say the game wasn't entirely well played because of the scrappiness. I don't wanna discredit uh, the team for playing into the scrappiness because once again like that's kind of what FlyQuest was looking for sure and Envy was it responding properly to that with the, with the collapses and ultimately winning those skirmishes but that's the point where I start to say okay this game wasn't played incredibly well because you built yourself a 16.6k lead and how are you throwing that? Right, and, and then like you said, uh, similarly, this was off of FlyQuest pressure. They tried to dive the bot lane as they took the turret, flub that one, try and dive the top side, flub yeah. that one, and, and you know, Envy obviously plays those situations better, but mm -hmm. once again, it's coming at the mistakes of FlyQuest. Yeah, very much so. Player of the game going to go to Hakuho on that Morgana for lots of crucial binds, highest kill participation, so just being in the right place at the right time in a very, very skirmish-heavy game. Right, well, uh, excellent support player. We've been talking a lot about Ole just previously in the other stream and being one of the most aggressive support players and, and one of the best. I think Hakuho kind of plays a different role where he's a lot more controlled and it's a lot more set up plays that is uh, not quite, I'm going to go get these kills, but this is the right thing to be doing. And he, and he plays the game very cerebrally. A top tier support in NA in his own right. Now, as we close out our weekend, let's go ahead and take a look at who stood out individually throughout our week of play. All Tech and Darshan stepped up for their teams by picking up three player of the games this weekend. Golden Blue and Cody Sun grabbed two each. Plus, Matt and Lemonation each picked up their first POG of the split. If we go ahead and look at the split wide uh, split wide standings, Bjergsen is still at the lead with eight awards. Frog and Lear, Sneaky just one accolade behind him. Only two weeks left to go. So these team, you know, for these players at the top of the table, right? They've really got to make their bid here in these coming weeks with maybe some stellar individual play. Of course, they should be more concerned with picking up the wins for the team. Right. I'm sure if you're asking these players, would you rather have your team finish highly in playoffs or would you rather get the most player of the games? I think most people are going to go option one. Yeah, absolutely. But if we turn to the team-wide standings, Immortals is now going to be crowned as our sole owner of first place at the end of week seven. We'll see how long that will last, though, as TSM and CLG are just a match behind them in second, while Cloud9, Team Envy, and Team Dignitas 
all end the day tied for fourth. So as we get rid of our three-way tie for first, we develop a three-way tie for fourth. We'll be back again next week for more LCS action, though. It starts on Friday with Zig and Phoenix 1 versus Keith and Echo Fox, followed by Team Liquid looking to take down Immortals. Now, you join the conversation on Twitter to call out the biggest plays of the weekend, and here are a few we thought deserved a second look, brought to you by Acer. First up, Nian loves a good 2v1 outplay, saying Darshan with the incredible surprise first blood. Don't die, Fiora. Let's take a look. Dashan could be in a spot of bother. Flame has done him already. Now I think Dashan knows too late. Pobelta here can repose, but the taunt's gonna be there. First blood on the right. No! Oh. Dashan able to take down Flame for first blood. Dashan okay. can look to go Thompson. Yes, him. Uh, so Gally's up. I'm bringing oh, something. Gally's up. Gally's up. Fuck. I'm gonna be here. Dashan got him. Dashan. Nice. Oh nice. my god, fucking nuts. That's the type of outplay you wanna see. Afrim was just watching the top lane too. Yeah, he, he called it even before it happened. He was like, you got him. That's easy. <laughs> That's free kill. Yeah. Ilo, we talked about the Fiora as that late game insurance policy against the multi-tank comp that mm -hmm. uh, Immortals had put together. And then he goes ahead and gets first blood. It's like, I'm not a late game insurance policy anymore. I'm an early game insurance policy. Right. I mean, you're a little concerned about the roams coming up top side. Maybe shut you down. It's like, no, no, no. I'm no, off the ground. Not I'm ready anymore. To go. Here we go. Now, up next, we've got Lorlo, who hit the perfect poppy ultimate in a tense Baron standoff versus Phoenix One. Take a look at this one. Golden Blue can't get a look in. There's actually no vision right now as Golden Glue's trying to get his way in. Zig looks for the ultimate. Gonna try and lock down Golden Glue. Peeling a little low here, but Golden Glue is gonna shove them back through. Golden Glue still taking down, but he's kiting out as best he can. Lolo gets in and knocks Pyrian out of the, the fight. Pyrian actually flashed into that. Gets knocked out. A Kogma, a Kogma. One Kog. Kog flashed. Nice, nice, nice. Really good job, guys. That's one of those ones where there's like, if you watch that play, there's so many individual outplays happening where Golden Glue also had a seismic shove on a body slamming Gragas to push him away from getting the chain CC off the Maokai, mm -hmm. as well as obviously that Lorlo uh, ultimate out on the, the uh, Jace. So overall, that's just one of those beautiful fights to rewatch a couple times. Right, but you saw how low Golden Glue was from a health perspective, and if that Jace doesn't get knocked out, perhaps Golden Glue goes down. Oh, yeah. He was putting in a lot of DPS from the side there, so fantastic heads up play from Lorlo. Finally, we heard from Young League fan, Liquid Dominate, who has a real challenge for our stats team concerning Bjergsen's milestone today, saying every time a player hits 1k kills, I wonder how many of them they got on me. Do you I mean, have a guess? I mean, so we were doing a little bit of math, and it was basically, you know, if you have a thousand kills, Bjergsen's been playing for four seasons. That means he's getting around 250 a season. That's like 125 a split. There's 50 players. You start doing some math, ends up around like four on you a split. You played four splits with him, so you know maybe so 16, something like 16, 15. You pretty much this is completely random. This isn't good math. And Don't Mark is apparently a mathematician. No, although no, no, no. It's no. not like it's helping us really in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, that's gonna go ahead and do it for us for today. Now for myself, the cast is the entire live broadcast crew. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for NALCS tonight where my, Azale, myself, and Zyrene will answer the questions that you sent to us on Twitter after the show. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for more North American LCS. Good night. So there's a lot of pressure on this team, especially Mike Young, who now there's even more pressure on the rookie to perform up against C9. And we'll see if he can match up against Contracts, a spring rookie of the split. So he's like, oh, where did this guy come from? Contracts, he's gonna take out on this one, fast blood! Contracts, can they grab it? Mike Young has so much hype right now, so I just gotta kill the hype. The red buff now gonna trespass into Mike Young. Mike Young might get assassinated here. Looks like oh. contract. Massive play. Now into arrows. Cloud now pick it up again. Sneaky firing away. There's the shot down in the corner. Oh. And the unofficial Benta kill goes over to Sneaky. Cloud9 get the ace, grab the Nexus, and win the series. The cavalry has arrived. And a double kill for Alltech as Double Lift is now grounded out and shut down. Then Scarret cannot escape. And Bjergsen will be the last thing to fall as Dignitas. Two zeros, TSM! Somebody once told me that the world was gonna roll me, but now I'm joined by the Sharpest Doing the Shit. I got Mark Zimmerman. Wild cards find their target one after the other. We said it was gonna be one big ending game fight. FlyQuest makes it two. Lemon gets drunk under the table. Ole actually coming up with another double kill on this six, two, and four bard. The mortals turn this one back around. Get him, get him, get him! Get him, get him, get him! Get him, get him, get him! Get the turn, get the turn. Nice combo, Jake. I think Dash on those two late. Pobelt are here. Can repose, but the taunt's gonna be there. First blood on the rush. No! Dash on over to take down Flame for first blood. Go, 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 go. One second, one second. I'm looking at Renekton. I'm going in, I'm going on these heads. Yeah, I'm looking. Close up. Nice! Again for their carries. IMT, this may be too strong as Flame with that amazing flank. And Immortals will take control of first.
The games start coming, and they don't stop coming. Now don't feed to the rules and hit ground running. Oh, TSM secures the objective. Bjergsen getting one of these kills. Bjergsen getting a second kill. 1,000 kills for Bjergsen. And they don't stop coming. Okay, we should dive, we should dive. Corky, 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 Corky. I'm out there, Kevin. I'm W here. I'm Cocoon. And TSM take down Echo Fox, two to one. No, listen, listen, no flash, listen, 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 As slow as possible. Yeah, as slow as possible. The most slow possible way, okay? Flash on arrow, they could die this way. Oh, he's dead. Molu's gonna find him, Perry, and dies as well. That's just a massacre in the mid lane. And Team Liquid sweep the weekend. GG too easy. And they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming.